Hi. Hi. So the next speech will be given in English, and the speaker is Johan. He is a. Um, he has more than 10 years of experience in software, and majoring in embedded system and general programming. General general programming. So his topic is native POS 6 compliance DOI on Windows. And you can find the HackMD link in our official site. So let's welcome Johan. Hi, hello everyone. I wasn't expecting so many people. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. So first, uh, our topic, native POS 6 compliance DOI on Windows. I'd like to amend it to Unix-like CLI because during the uh, during the uh, during creating the, the slides, I just realized uh, the shell I'm using is not fuzzy compliant. And about me, I'm a programming enthusiast, open source project contributor, familiar with embedded system and general programming, just like uh, the the lady introduced. I have created a game plugin for me to, uh, f for automatically fishing in the game World of Warcraft. To achieve this, uh, because the, um, the, the, la the language I used didn't provide such improved functions, so I, I even enhanced the function of this auto hacked language. I have some popular repository on GitHub and some badges. Some people know me through. Some people know me through the applications I created. Some people know me through work. And I really like the uh, the spirit of open source. So I visit a few of those companies' headquarters. I've been to Costco a few times, both as regular participant and representative. I also created some Python libraries on PyPy. And that's it for me. This is our agenda today. First, let's talk about the difference between shell and CLI. When most of us say shell, we actually refer to a Unix-like shell, such as bash, zsh, partial, cmd, fish. However, a shell is actually a software interface of the operating system to a user. That is, it's the layer we inter interact with. It can be text-based as well as graphic-based. For example, DOS, Windows 3.1, E10 Chinese system, uh, famous Linux dis uh, desktop environments, and also famous user interface of Android phones. Maybe not DOS and E10 because their names also cover their entire operating systems. So here's a, uh, like a summary. So the shell in the Linux world, I think Linux user is like very knowledgeable, so they know the Unix -like shell is shell, so they call them shell. And the uh, desktop environments, they know they are desktop environments, so they call them desktop environments. In Windows and other world, people just uh, like to call their specific names. So now we are all clear with the term shell. But before we go to the next topic, let's talk about what terminal is. Traditionally, computers were large and heavy. They were mainframes, like super large computers. You need a terminal to interact with them. Terminals were originally formed of keyboards and lamps, like lamps. Later, lamps are replaced by papers. These terminals are hard copy terminals, just like what you see in the background. They actually print both the input and the output. Hard copy terminals are like teleprinters. Teleprinters are the devices used in telegraphy. Telegraphy is, in Chinese, is dianbao. Teleprinters are also called teletypewriter, teletype in short form, and abbreviated as TTY. Some teleprinters were used as computer terminals. 
this historical story is the major reason that we have dev TTY on Linux. Let's talk about CLI. CLI stands for Command Line Interface. There's also a term TUI. It stands for Text-Based User Interface. The difference between TUI and CLI is TUI, though, it's also text-based. The entire area of terminal is controlled. On the other hand, on CLI, contents that were printed were printed. Hard copy terminals are with CLI, as you can't change the printed contents on the paper. So here's an example. On the left side, this menu config is uh, used in some projects that have complicated config, such as Linux kernel. And because you can basically interact with the entire area of the screen or terminal, so it's TUI. On the right side, it's a very famous Unix shell, Bash. And as you can see, whatever printed on the screen, basically they are printed. You cannot change them. So it's CLI. Modern computers have terminal emulators or say terminal applications to simulate the, the traditional terminal environments. So the next topic, why do I need CLI? Basically, it's so handy. I think it's the main reason most programmers use Mac OS. Um, off the top of my head, there are like, uh, with script, uh, with CLI, it's very easy to batch the process we want to do. And they often have rich commands, applications. They are powerful, powerful, sorry, efficient, and they have remote control support and has consistent uh, user interface. I'm sure you all get your own points easily once you have some experience with CLI. So doesn't Windows already have its own CLI? It does. There's CMD, command prompt, the traditional one. But it's just not as handy and powerful as what are on Unix-like systems. What CMD lacks, there's a lot. So I'm simply listing what I can thought of right now, like searchable command history, type completion, job control, alias, variable expansion, here the consistent index in CL and batch file. The seventh uh, item is very tricky. You know, you have different syntax when you're just r using the CLI interface and have the, um, the, same, the same content written in .bat or .cmd. It's very inconsistent. So what about partial? Partial is so much better than CMD. It's legit, but I'm already super familiar with batch-like shells. I heard there is WSL can achieve the same goal. WSL is a great choice in some scenarios. It has the easiest setup and is the most popular method to have Unix like CLI on Windows. The thing is, binaries that are compiled in WSL, WSL can only be used in it. Because WSL, uh, the one is already abandoned. We are, uh, we are all using WSL2 now. WSL2 is a virtual machine, which dramatically affects the performance and as well as the, uh, the convenience and the scope of use. I also heard SIGWIN. SIGWIN, created by Signal Solutions, that's why it's called SIGWIN, creates a layer to emulate the Linux environment for applications on top of the environment. This layer, however, is not lean. That means not as fast as the native environment. In addition, SIGWIN's package manager is not as good as those on Linux distros. And there's a fork of SIGWIN called MSYS, later improved as MSYS2. MC2 solves a bunch of downsides from SIGWIN. The user experience, for at least for developers, is pretty good. There's another project called uh, MingGW, and later forked to, fork to MingGWW64. This project uh, creates a compilation environment for GCC against the native Windows APIs. That means the compiled executable binaries are as fast as those compiled with Visual Studio because they are native. Git for Windows for is, a, is an example. Uh, this project 
built on top of M62 and main GW W64. So here's a comparison table. Performance-wise, WS2 is slow. On SIGWIN and M62, if you have those uh, binaries who, 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 which were compiled uh, uh, with M, uh, main GW W64, they will have native speed. And native executable and uh, sorry, so for executables, the binaries, uh, WSL, WSL2, you can't have native executables. But on SIGWIN and MCS2, no matter you compiled against the, uh, the layer or the against the native Windows APIs, you can have native executable. And of course, if you compile with uh, main GW WX4, you have better performance. And package manager, uh, so on WSL2, you have native links digital package managers, so they are very powerful. On M62, you have Pacman. Pacman is the package manager used in Arch Linux, so it's very uh, powerful and mature. So why not just use Git for Windows? The answer is Pacman is taken out, so that means we are not able to add or remove packages. So okay, so here's the the point. Let's talk about step by step M62 and the ZSH, ZSH configurations that I have done. Uh, so please go to read, it, read me of my dot files. Uh, this is kind of embarrassing, but I think it's more important to be clear with the concept and the uh, the history. So I'm not going to go to too much details today, but you can read all the details from the readme of this uh, project. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you some demos. You are going to have Tmux, Modern Prompt, both dark and light themes support, SSH support, and Unix like shell support, symbolic link support, and both path styles support. So you pretty much have everything you have on um, Mac OS or Linux of CLI. And what you have is uh, blended into the three major operating systems. So why ZSH? Uh, basically because there's a powerful community called oh My ZSH. What about Fish? There's also a framework called oh My Fish. The two, uh, I think they are the most, the two most popular repositories of ZSH, sorry, the plugin of ZSH are inspired by Fish. So Fish is just so, um, it's just um, so good. But for some reason, ZSH is just more popular. Maybe it's because the, it's SSH-like syntax. So what other, what other <laughs> promising choices do we have? So if we focus on prompt, traditionally, Powerline. Powerline is one of the earliest uh, prompt framework uh, of the shell. Uh, it supports basically the most used uh, uh, Unix shell, and it's powered by Python. Performance-wise, performance wise, I'm not sure if it's written in Python. The performance is just not that good. And then later, there's power level, power level something, and power level 9K, power level 10K. Power level 10K supports ZSH, and it's powered by ZSH. The performance is very fast. And also, power level 10K, because it's written in ZSH, so you don't have to uh, have additional dependency. If you are working with like embedded system, normally if you want to have like, if, if you want to have a Rust based binary, you have to compile that either on the, on the platform itself or do that, uh, do the cross platform on your uh, working environment. So 
with uh, ZSH support. So written in ZSH is really a benefit. And then there's Oh My Posh and Starfish. They have similar goals. They support most of the shells. And one of them is powered by Go, the other is powered by Rust. And the Starship is the fasti fasti fastest one in this table. And about CLI shells. So traditionally with Bash, you basically have the best compatibility. But with ZSH, you have still reasonable compatibility, but lots of re more features. And Fish is arguably most user friendly. Partial is a different level. It's, um, it's not just because it's Microsoft or Windows background. It's, it's, uh, it, it really creates something. It's optimized for dealing with tr structured data. If you have, uh, I, I don't have any example here, but you have, if you uh, use it a little bit, you'll get it. The way it interacts with data is different from other shows. Other shows treat, they don't have this concept data. They just, they just interact with streams. But partial, you have data, you have objects. A new show uh, is basically a partial uh, clone, Rust version. And with Unix like show um, culture blended. So it, it, it's relatively new, but it's, it looks like promising. It's a lot of users are trying it. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's going to be the next fish. But currently, I'm still using ZSH, so that's why uh, I choose ZSH on Windows. And that's it for today. Uh, any questions? You can, I guess you can also ask in Chinese if you want. Okay, if there's no questions, I guess I don't have too many <laughs> examples today. But if there's no questions, that's it today. Thank you. <笑>我拿麥給你。哦。呃,我沒有電腦。那剛剛有另外一位舉手的。嗯,好,我過去。因為我之前在Windows有用,我在用過WSL,那它在,它的需求它會有permission的問題,那permission跟Linux完全不一樣,我一定要superuser才能解決這個問題。我不確定說你這個ZSH OK OK 還有人要問問題嗎好那如果沒有的話我們就謝謝尤翰今天帶來的演說他很厲害用英文講超強的還有還有